Hey, let's bring in our next guest on FT Live, J.D. Davis, joining us right now from the San Francisco Giants. A little cool breeze out there. J.D., what's going on, man? How you doing? Hey, not too bad. Thank you guys for having me, man. Uh, yeah, we're out here in Philly just uh, getting the second game in, man. We're, uh, we're excited, and uh, it's going to be a big series. Hey, it's going to be a big night. You've got a debut night for Kyle Harrison. He's been talked yeah. about a lot. So have you met him yet? Or did you probably saw him in spring training is my guess. And what can we expect from him? I heard his stuff is uh, pretty ridiculous. Yeah, so I haven't really had a full conversation with him. He's been one of those young guys, been a little bit of a mouse in the clubhouse and been quiet and uh, uh, kind of staying to his own, doing his own routine. But uh, he came in yesterday uh, said hi to him. He looked a little jittery. He looked a little excited. So, uh, But the clubhouse, we're buzzing right now. We're excited to have him on here. He's got a great fastball, uh, power pitcher lefty from uh, kind of a three-quarter over-the-top angle. But um, it's going to be interesting to see um, uh, how he goes about it, especially here in uh, Philly. It's going to be fun to watch. So what, uh, what, what would you rather have? Would you rather have the rookie that comes in as a mouse or would you rather have the rookie that's more of a mouthpiece? <laughs> oh, man, I think I had a little bit of both. I had Casey Schmidt that, that was on that side of the spectrum and then uh, we had uh, Kyle Harris as a little bit of a mouse. Um, I don't know. I think it all that matters is it goes out there and throws strikes, pounds the zone, and does its thing. I think it doesn't really matter uh, how you carry yourself as long as you do your job and have a nice routine and a great guy in the clubhouse. JD, we got a mutual friend, a uh, little brother to me, uh, Jesus Ramos. I've uh, seen each other in, in, in Mexico, but I had to hit him up. He was, and he said, first thing that came to his mind is, in college, how did you get the nickname Bubbles? <laughs> 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 so that's all right. So I'll keep it. I'll keep it short. So when Va uh, Rick Vanderhook was at Fullerton, I came in at, as a freshman. Uh, to Fullerton, I was about I was pushing about 240 to 245 pounds. Um, if you could probably put one, two together, I had, a, I had a big old butt, big old belly, big old head. So he called me Bubbles. Um, and I don't, know, I don't know where he got that name. I think it was the, the song that came out uh, at that time. It was called Bubble Butt. Um, and so that kind of stuck with me. Uh, so as my, uh, my rebuttal, I tried to lose as much weight as I can. So it, it went from bubbles to bubs as a short name. So it's, I still kept it. Every time I go around Fullerton, uh, that's my nickname and that's what's been, uh, been stuck over the years. So it's good. <laughs> I'm going to get it back for that. I'm going to get it back and put that on TV. <laughs> <laughs> that's a new one, Jonesy. That's you're doing the, uh, the good digging there. That's good. Good, research. good homework. <laughs> Very good research. I like it. Hey, JD, how's life uh, with the Giants? I know you're having fun with a team that's, you know, very unique and also very much involved, obviously, in a playoff race right now. I mean, how much are you enjoying life with a ball club like this? I'm enjoying it. You know, it's a complete 180. Um, breath of fresh air over here. Uh, it's about winning games over here in San Fran. Um, and it's led by a lot of guys in our clubhouse with Jock. Uh, with Slater, Conforto, some of these older guys. That are, I mean, obviously Crawford, he's been there for, uh, you know, feels like for decades. So um, we got a great group of guys, mixture of veterans and uh, some younger guys that obviously, you know, Harrison, uh, Harrison's making his debut tonight. So um, it's been a blast. Uh, it's been a little bit of a roller coaster. This team's a little streaky. Uh, I know you probably guys have been following, but it like, feels like we, you know, win five games, lose three games, win six, you know, lose five. Uh, but I feel yeah. like the team is in incredibly dangerous. Um, so I think it's just a great group of guys on and off the field. JD, uh, you said a 180 from the other organization you were a part of. <laughs> um, <laughs> why? Because you guys are winning and they aren't? Uh, what's the difference between, uh, you know, where you came from to where you are now? Oh, man. Oh, man. So I think a little bit, if I were to summarize it a little bit, you know, I was part of a group or part of a, an organization, a team that, just uh, was passing the baton to so many people when I got traded over in 2019. Um, you know, Conforto can probably speak more of it than I can, but uh, or he experienced it more than I can. But from 2019, from the time that I was out of there in 2022, um, I think we had three or four GMs. We had another owner. We had uh, four or five managers. So 
Uh, what I mean by like 180, I guess the stability of it from organization to organization where it felt like when I was in New York, there was no identity with the team. There was no direction because there was just so many new, new moving parts, new uh, leaders, um, new uh, just people that would make the decisions. And I feel like at that time, there wasn't really much direction with the team where with the with these guys in San Francisco, um, the direction is about winning games, uh, getting to the playoffs, and giving our team the best chance to win. So the direction is to win games and make the playoffs and you have stability. But if somebody would look at the Giants, they'd be like, there is not a lot of stability there. They are running <laughs> dudes in and out, sixth inning, you're out, line change, next in, third inning change. Was that tough to get used to when you got over there? Um, to be honest with you, it's probably easier as a position player to get used to it than, you know, uh, than a, than a pitcher because we have so many opening guys and coming in, I think Sean Manai, you know, he's, he's been a starter for his all year and he's coming in as a, uh, as a bolt guy for more innings. Same with Jake, uh, Jacob Junis, uh, Ross Stripling. Um, so I guess a little bit contradicting for, uh, the stability part of it, but however, I would say this, that the communication of it, um, the resources and I would say the overall direction and the overall goal of this team is a lot different or a complete 180. Um, and I think uh, guys have taken over here a lot of accountability. Um, and if they're not performing well, then they accept the role that, you, that they're going after. And then whatever role that they have, they give it to you their 100% day in and day out. I think that speaks volume of the guys on this team uh, uh, putting their egos to the side and uh, doing what's best and trying to win ball games. You mentioned a few guys, but who's the leader in that clubhouse? Is it the incredibly good-looking Brandon Crawford, or <laughs> is it somebody else? Oh man, uh, I think it's a mixture of a lot of us. Uh, Jock is definitely one of them. Uh, he's definitely the heartbeat of that clubhouse. Um, Craw is the silent, silent leader. Um, another. You know, a couple guys, I would say uh, Yaz and uh, Conforto as well. And then on the pitching side, it's more so of, uh, I would say, Webby and Cobb. Now, do you guys, do you guys have, because before we saw a video of you guys rolling into the clubhouse and you had the whole, like, the smoke and everything. When I was there in 19, we had the smoke and the lights and all but we had a Brandon, we had a uh, Brandon Belt there, so there was a little more clown show stuff. Yeah. Has Crawford kept all of this, and has he kept all of his incestually annoying <laughs> brackets? He puts a bracket for everything. Like JD Davis's smile is in the bracket of sixty-four. Do, do you guys still do all that kind of stuff, or is there less shenanigans now that Gabe is loving himself as the manager there? Uh, I would say Crawford is still up to his ways. He's making brackets here and there. We just had a bracket in which to uh, figure out the fantasy football draft order in which to pick uh, where we're going to draft in. We just had a bracket for that. Um, uh, what else did we have a bracket for? But anyways, uh, what else would you ask? Uh, but there are still shenanigans. We still got the whole club scene when every time we win, um, we got the smoke, we got the lasers, we got the – wacky inflatable guy that's going on in the clubhouse um, we've got some of our clubhouse guys that uh, got light up uh, shoes light up glasses light up vests uh, every time we walk in after a win um, kind of like a tron suit in a way if tron the movie um, heck we got uh man we got poker tables across the uh, clubhouse um, we got a little putt putt in the middle of the clubhouse so the shenanigans are at an all-time high in the, in the giants clubhouse um and just keeps things light and fun. Uh, a few weeks back, you guys went out for Brandon Crawford's charity event. Um, can you give us a, a little bit more information about what Brandon Crawford, uh, his charity event, what it does, what it means to the city of San Francisco? And obviously he's been there for, I think, going on 12, 13 years. And just his impact in not just the city, the team and the community. Yeah. Um, Brandon Crawford's an icon on and off the field for San Francisco. He's been uh, been there for many, many years on heck over almost a decade um, and his charity event the golf event was about ALS uh, just to raise money and awareness for that um, he asked me Webby and uh, Conforto to come out and support and uh, we uh, I was glad I took that, that offer it was great we played at the Presidio Golf uh, Country Club 
phenomenal golf course. It's a little, little cold, a little windy, but the cause of it uh, for, for ALS and just to uh, go out there and show support and spend uh, and um, uh, raise some money for the for the cause, and that's pretty much what it was about. It's awesome. It's a great. Time. You guys are in Philly now. You guys lost a big one last night. You yep. come back. How do you guys not scoreboard watch and yet you know where you're at? Well, it's easier said than done, but we got to worry from pitch to pitch. Last night was last night. Um, you know, we ran into uh, our best chance was, you know, really to push the envelope or uh, bend the pole against NOLA for the first two innings. Uh, when I was over with the Mets, I've gotten a heavy dose of NOLA. You know, he's a very command guy. Um, and once he gets comfortable, he puts on the cruise control, you know, it's dangerous. And any team is, you know, uh, you know, could be the, the victim of, of NOLA in itself. So uh, what we need to do is turn the page from last night, know that it's one game um, and to come in here and uh, have grindy at bats against Taiwan Walker tonight um, and put some more pressure on them and get into that bullpen try to get a win tonight so that way the rubber game maybe we could do some damage against their bullpen and uh start back right back on over and uh, i think uh i think rangers on the il so we'll see who they start uh tomorrow um, but our best chance is to get a win tonight so at least our rubber game is uh against them on the getaway day all right so the best part of road trips for me was not the fact because i didn't play it was the bus trips all right so you're getting on the bus, you get into Philly, you guys got a short little ride from the airport to the hotel. Are you getting on the mic and singing? Because we <laughs> hear that you have an elite voice. And can we hear a little bit of it? <laughs> Answer the second question. No, you can, you know, you're not going to hear it on here. It's, it's, it's very spontaneous. It's in the moment. It has to be with music on. But, however, I'm not the guy on the mic. I will give credit to Sean Mania for that one. Great guy on the mic. Um, and then also who uh, chimes in as well is uh, Logan Webb. So that's who we got. So you don't – so you're not going to give us any because there's no music or because you just don't – you don't have – like, what's a favorite song? What's your what's your go-to? Is it <laughs> A little bit of both. You ain't, you ain't going to get me to sing on here. You already got bubbles, <laughs> you already got bubbles on this program. You don't need to get me to sing on <laughs> I mean, I'll start singing if you want. We had Aaron Boone sing. He he was he was tweeting about Aaron Boone was tweeting about Rihanna, and he just gave us a little like Bella, Ella, Ella. So let's hear. I mean, just a little bit for somebody for the people. <laughs> um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Um, thinking of a song. Thinking of a song. So I'll go like this. So there's always two songs. Uh, I'll say this one song. Uh, I forgot. Damn, I forgot who, song, who sang it. Now you're gonna. Now you're gonna put me on the spot right now. But with uh, the assistant hitting coach Dustin, there's two songs that I always sing. One one song whenever I get out. One song whenever I, I get get a hit, and that's uh, that's the song. But uh, and I will always love you, um, because it's a baseball song. Because I got a hit. Uh, so I'm happy about it, and I'm back in love with the game. So it's kind of, uh, and I... Say, that's what I got for you right there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll, walk right, I'll walk right in the cage, walk right in the cage and sing that. And if, if you hear that, that means I got a hit. And, you know, uh, baseball, baseball gods are on my side now. <laughs> love that. Okay, so I'm going to keep the good times going right now. Um, a regular guest on this show goes by the name of Rowdy Telez, oh. who I know you know. So you got to give us either a Rowdy story, a Rowdy question, and you know how Rowdy is. And I will say this because just to give you an, an idea of, yes, the show later goes like on regular TV, but it gets dubbed. So we say whatever we want. Right. Rowdy doesn't give a fuck. When no, he comes no. on this show, he says whatever he wants, <laughs> and people get to see the true Rowdy Telez, and they have fallen in love with him because he's hilarious, and he gives everyone shit. So give us something on Rowdy. Oh, man. Well, I'll say this. He does look like me, so he's like the fatter J.D. Davis, if you were to put side by side, but he has no hair, so, I'll, so I got the one up on him on that. Actually, two up because he's the fat bald me, uh, but... 
Oh, man. I would say this. Uh, I don't know if he told you guys this story, but every time I uh, go on first base, he's always got something to trash talk me about, about if it's my cleats, if it's about my jersey, or if it's anything about my pants or the way that I'm looking nowadays. He looked me dead in the straits with this the, the dry humor that he's got um, and sit there and be like, you wore that today? You picked that out today? <laughs> came on the big league field and you picked that to wear out here on national television. And that was it. You won't say anything else. You'll be all quiet and that's the you, you dumbed up real quick. But <laughs> on Rowdy, he loves to talk trash. He's been doing it since high school. Uh, but we love him and he's just, uh, he's a great guy on and off the field. Did you see the graphic image of his finger? Um, the injury? No. Oh, I heard, I, I already got injured, but I haven't seen any of the pictures. It's Dude, oh, man. it's bad. It's really bad. Um, yeah. we'll, we'll send it to you to, to see it's worth a look. Okay. And the one other thing I'll tell you, cause the last time we had him on, he was going through his rehab assignment. And I feel like most players have a story of like a at least one like weird encounter with fans. He had like five in a week playing in like in like indie. He had one occurrence where he was like in the lobby and a guy was like, hey, I'm a huge fan, all this shit, like good to meet you, whatever. And he's like, no joke this is what Rowdy told us. And he said it was real, not like a Rowdy story. He said, he goes, oh, I have some stuff for you to sign. Can you come up to my hotel room to sign it? And I was like, what? <laughs> like, are you kidding me? <laughs> Christ, like, yeah, okay, I'll meet you there. So he, I'm like, dude, why do you get like weird shit all the time? He's like, I think because I look like everyone, like just your your average guy. <laughs> it's it's like, cause I got I got a belly. People think they can say weird shit to me. So um, <laughs> have, have, can you top that weird encounter? Have you had any weird fan encounters over your years where they've asked you? Maybe maybe the New York crowd said some weird shit. Oh man. Man, uh, the only the only weird videos I got is is from Frank. You guys have seen him plenty of times on Barstool or anything like that. But man, I don't got any weird stories like that. Uh, I try to stay out of the limelight. Uh, but yeah, that's what I got. I can't top that. I'm sorry. No, that's fine. Rowdy's got more stories in a freaking week. Dude is <laughs> on fire sometimes. But hey, JD, awesome to have you on, man. Really fun. Really enjoyed it. Learned a lot. And uh, we'd love to have you back sometime, dude. Keep doing your thing out there. All right. Thank you, guys. Appreciate you guys for having me.